In this video, we are going to learn how to use Serilog so that we can save log messages into our SQL Server database. So let's create a new project. It will be an SP.NET Core web application. I will name it Serilog Example. And you can find the code in GitHub for this example in the description of this video. Let me say SP.NET Core Web API, although what we're going to do will work in any template of an SP.NET Core web application. So let me click on create and we're here in Visual Studio. Let's go to the solution explorer because first I want to install some Nugget packages. So let's click on here. Let me go to browse and we will install three packages. The first one is called serilog.sp.net core. I will click on here and I will install it and I will click on accept. Then I will install serilog settings configuration. Let me click on here and also install it. And finally, we are going to install serilog things Microsoft SQL Server. So let's click on here and install accept. And we're going to go here so I can close this. Now we have installed serilog, so let's configure it. First, we need to put some configuration in a configuration provider. In our case, we're just going to use the app settings JSON file. So in here, I'm going to write the following. I will write here serilog, which is where by default we can put the serilog configuration. So let me say minimum level, and I will say information. This means that we're only going to store information warning error and critical messages, not trace nor debug. So let's put a comma here and let me say write to because where do we want to write our log messages? We want to write them into SQL Server. So here we are going to do this. We're going to say name and we're going to say MSQL Server. And in here I can say args for the arguments and we need a connection string. We still don't have a database, but we will create that in just a minute. I will say data source. In my case, I can just use dot because the name of my SQL Server instance is the same of my machine. Semicolon here, initial catalog, which is the name of the database. We're going to name it serilog example, semicolon here, and integrated security equal to true because I want to use my Windows credentials to log in into SQL Server. So I will say table name, which is the name of the table, and we are going to call it logs. And finally, I'm going to say auto create SQL table is going to be equal to true because I want that this table gets created automatically. Now, let me create this database. I will copy this name. And then I will go to SQL Server Management Studio. I will right click on databases, new database. I will paste the name here, set it log example. I'll click on OK. And here we have our database. And as you can see, we don't have any tables, right? But that will change once we finish configuring set it log. Let me save this. And now let's go to the program class. First, I need to come here and I need to say use set it log control dot. You serilog will bring the namespace serilog, which is this one that we have here. And now this is working. And now we need to configure the login provider. With the login provider of serilog, we're going to be able to use the iLogin service that comes with SP.NET Core. And every time we use that service, we're going to be able to send our login messages into SQL Server. Let's do that. Let me say here, I configuration root configuration equal to new configuration builder. We're going to build a configuration because I need to get from there this information that we have here. So I will say a JSON file, app settings JSON. I will say that this is not optional. So optional false and also reload on change true. And we're going to build this and let me put this in another line so that it can be visualized better. Now I need to use that configuration to configure the city log logger. So let me say log dot logger equal to new logger configuration. 
read from, we're going to read the configuration from a configuration provider, and we're going to pass our a configuration root. And let me say create logger. And with this, we're good to go. Now, every time we use the iLogger service, for example, in the controllers folder in the weather forecast controller class, here we have a iLogger instance, a iLogger service that we're using. And when we get to use it in just a minute, we're going to be storing the login messages into our SQL Server database. Let's do that. First, remember that we don't have the logs table, right? So let me just press Ctrl F5 to run our application. And you're going to see that automatically, just as we configure it, the table is going to get created. Let's go here. Let's right click in tables, refresh. And here we have logs. And let me right click here, select top 1000. And as you can see, we have a lot of information here. Why is that? Well, because we selected the minimum level to be information. And because Spironet Core by default is already using the login service to display information level messages, we're getting those messages here. For example, here we have application started, press Ctrl C to shut down, hosting environment development, and so on. I will teach you how to remove this in just a minute. For now, what I want to do is to come here, and I need to come here. I want to use this iLogger service, so let me say logger. I will say log information. This is a custom message, and let me compile my application. And now I need to run this method, so for that I can come back here, and I can copy this, and I can paste that here. I could also run it from here, but I like to do it from here. So let me press enter, and I have run this. Now, the login message here may take like a few seconds, so if you come here and you just don't see it, it's okay. Just wait a few seconds and try again. In our case, it is here. This is a custom message, so as you can see, this is working. Now, again, this is too many information. We don't want to have this much of information here. So what I can do is to delete all of this. So let me say delete. And I will hover this and press F5. Now let me delete this delete from here. And now we have an empty table. So let me go back here because I need to go to the settings JSON. And instead of using the minimum level information, I can use something like warning, which is more reasonable. And let me save. And now let's come here. Let me say then log warning. And also let's make another example right away. I want to say try, I want to throw an exception, new not implemented exception, for example, and then catch that not implemented exception. And I will say logger, log error, and I will pass the exception and the exception message, x message. And that's it. Now let me control shift V one more time to compile my application. And let me come back here and let me refresh. Now. I can go back here and I can press F5. And as you can see, we only have these two messages. Why? Because we are filtering the information messages. We only are showing warning, error, and critical messages. So here we have, this is a custom message. And here we have the exception. The method or operation is not implemented. And let me show you something. Here we have a exception field. And I can copy this. And I can open notepad and paste that here. And as you can see here, we have this a stack trace and here we get that the error was thrown in line 34 and indeed if we go back here we will have that this exception was thrown in line 34 and not only that there is something else that i want to show you and it's the following let me copy this and let me see how it looks here looks okay but we can make this a little bit bigger so let me say 18 i just want you to see the following thing we have this request ID field here, right? This request ID allows you to relate a login message with another depending if they were made in the same HTTP request. For example, let's come here. Let me copy this and also paste it here. And as you can see, we can copy this and I can use find and you will see that they are the same request ID. Why? Because they were made these two log messages were made by the same in the same HTTP context. Now let me go back here and I want to refresh. We just made another HTTP request, which is different from the first one, of course. Now if we go back here and we press F5 and let me take another properties 
value from here from the new HTTP request, you are going to see that now we have, for example, here 8000 to E and 80012, which, as you can see, means that we can definitely, definitely use this request ID field to relate one login message to another so that if we are studying some sort of case and we want to see which login messages are related to that case, to that HTTP request in which the case occurred, you can definitely use this request ID that we have here. If you like this video, please make sure to subscribe to my channel and let me know what you want me to cover next. Thanks.